Welcome to Paraben's E3 platform training. Searching using regular expressions with advanced search. Brief training outline. Which tool is this available in? It's in all of our tools, E3 Universal, E3 P2C, E3 Nemex, E3 EMX, and E3 DS. We'll go over what is a regular expression, how do I create regular expressions, what are they commonly used for, what is the difference between keyword search and advanced search, and how can E3 help me automate this process? What is a regular expression? A regular expression, regex, also called a rational expression, is a sequence of characters that define a search pattern. Usually this pattern is used by the string searching algorithm for find or find and replace operations on string. For instance, if I want to find a string pattern that includes any single digit from 0 to 9 or any single lowercase letter from A to Z, followed by any single digit from 0 to 9 or any single lowercase letter from A to Z or any single uppercase letter from A to Z. How do I use a regular expression? On the screen you'll see a table if you want to find a string pattern. So you have to have brackets in between each statement. Continuing on, Sometimes if you need the OR, you don't include the bracket. So it's 0 through 9, A through Z, close, open and close brackets. You can also include meta characters. Again, we're not going to go into too much detail on this. Escaped alphabetical characters and carrots. Now, if you need to Learn more about using regex. I highly recommend using the Google uh, to do that and search for more information. What are they commonly used for? Major credit card numbers, domain names, email addresses, IP addresses, MAC addresses, URL hosts, word searches, phone numbers, national IDs, currency, and much, much more. Prior to showing you how regex searches work in E3, I'd like to go over the differences between keyword searches and advanced searches. Super important. Um, so you have the keyword search, advanced search, the speed. The speed is key. Keyword searching takes only a couple minutes, whereas advanced search can take up to an hour or more. So it's really great to know how much time you need to allocate to each search. There's different types of data types. Advanced search has a plethora more data types than just the keyword search. Here are the different options available between keyword search and advanced search. As you can see, keyword search is pretty limited on what it'll search for, whereas advanced search, you can pull a ton more information. Just really great to review and look over if you're unfamiliar with this. I knew I just threw a ton of information your way, but let's see how E3 can help you automate this process of searching with regex so it's not overwhelming, you have standard templates, and you should be good to go. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and start E3. So just double click on the E3 icon. E3 will then begin to load. Once E3 has fully loaded, we're going to go ahead and close out of that. I already have a case that I've done some searching in because it is a lengthy process. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that case and show you some of the regex searches that I've done so far. Now that my case is fully loaded, we are going to go through and show you exactly how to do the regex searches. One key note to mention, if you've already completed searches and you have a source name of, for instance, Sonia Bootloader, and you go and change that name right here under case name, those search parameters will then become invalid. So that's why I always recommend you create a new case before adding evidence. As you can see, I've added three different pieces of evidence. I've added a bootloader acquisition, a cloud import acquisition, and an iPhone acquisition. And because they're blue, you can tell that I've sorted them. I always recommend going up to the Analysis tab and sorting all of your content 
doing the content analysis, and I also like to index for images with OCR. On the content analysis tab, we are going to go to advanced search. Here we're going to use the regular expressions and then we're going to use some templates. So here are all of our templates, IP addresses, URLs, and paths, phone numbers and postal codes, personal identifiers for credit cards and social security numbers, dates and time, emails, others, and user templates. You can go ahead and add your own regex templates to this if you consistently use a specific character set or a string. So we're going to go ahead and to any URL and we're just going to have that enter into itself. Now as you can see right now is highlighted the entire case file. So the entire case file will be ran with this regular expression string. Search area, you can do recursive searches in disk images, archives, email databases, chat databases, registry, internet browser, OLE, storages, SQL, light databases. If you choose one of those, you're going to have more tabs open up so you can define your options. So we're going to go ahead and also do an email database so you can see that. Registry, and eh, we'll just do them all. So you can see all of the options. So file system data, you can define this search text scope. I always like to search for extracted text data for images with OCR. You can do the file attributes, email databases, you can do senders to from, you can add filters, remove filters, chat databases, internet browser data, and registry data. I've previously run some regex searches, so if I go down here under the completed tab under searching and click on this, you can see the source path. So it's the bootloader, bootloader mobile data, the phone, file system. So this is where I ran that search from. You can also right click and do advanced search there as well. So if you click on that, you can see what search this is. This is email addresses. So the template I used was this one right here to search for email addresses. And then the search area, I am only searching SQLite databases and also for OCR. So I go down here and I see that I have a hit. This is a binary data hit. And if you double click on it, you can see there's an email address in there. Not the specific email address we were looking for, but you can also see that it is a JPEG and what files attached. You have your MD5, your SHA-1. Just remember, when using E3, you always want to work left to right. So we start off at the left, we go to the middle, and then all of our content is on the right. So we have a hex viewer, extracted data view, tax view, file view, this isn't a thumbnail, and then of course the properties view as well as the content analysis and this was done through sorting. We're going to go down in the search results pane and then we have one hit converted text. So I've bookmarked these for just easy reference. So you can see her email address, sonia.bn at gmail.com. Properties of this. If you need to go to that, just right click and go to file. So this is going to take you to where that file resides within the file structure of the bootloader image. We're going to go back down to another search I completed on the iPhone. So we're just going to minimize all that up. So double click it's going to appear. Whew. What is this regular expression? The template that I used was for a telephone number. So if you go into use templates and then go to 
phone numbers and postal codes, I use the North American telephone number. So I'm going to cancel out of that. My search area, I did email databases, chat databases, SQLite, and internet browser data. I did not scan for OCR this time. I did e just standard email databases, standard, so nothing has really been changed. So my search results, if I go down and I find a hit, I have a find a phone number, double click on that, over here in the general property view, you're going to see the phone number for Lucky7. If you need to go to that phone number, you can right click, go to file, and that's going to take you to the contacts folder where you can see where that information was pulled from for the phone number. To get back to the search page, and you don't want to bookmark anything, any artifacts in here, just close out the contacts. It's always going to be up here, and you can move them as appropriate. You can also go through SQL Lite databases. So if you go here and you double click, it's going to bring up the phone number by default. If you go to the file, it's going to take you to that SQLite database. It might be an unparsed database, but you can go through the database manually and see the information as well. Getting back to our searches, we're going to go ahead and double click on this search that I ran. And this is for an email address. I know that because it has the at sign in it. Um, I've used this email address template a lot. So here it is, email address. And then within the email address, I have email databases, chat databases, SQLite, internet browser data. And if we go, we can see there's a one hit. Double click on that and you can see the value of that hit is her Gmail account. And I just want to show you how long these generally take. So I had one that took two minutes, I had one that took over an hour. It depends on how much data within the acquisition that you're trying to, to go through. So let's go up to the one I stopped because if you could see there's 126,404 hits and it kept going and going and going. I can't go through all that data to process. So I went ahead and I stopped it. If you ever need to stop, you just click right here. Um, the, the red stop like button will appear. Click stop and then if it's um, a search that you no longer need, you just can remove that search as well. We'll go to this search right here. This search template used is the amount with the dollar sign. So sometimes it doesn't give you like the full value. So this one's just a dollar sign nine. But you can see along, hey, it's Shark Week. That's what the dollar sign nine is attached to in the text view. And then extracted view, there's nothing there. And you can go through with the hex view as well. That's our brief overview of regex templates within acquisitions. I really recommend um, them if you're doing a general sweep for artifacts. Also, keyword searches are great as well. So are the Boolean searches. If you know what you're looking for, I would highly recommend a Boolean search. You can do a hex search. There's a ton of things. You can search through the sorted files. You can also generate, here we go, you can generate reports upon the selected data. So if you just right click, generate search results report. This will only generate a report on your search results. So if you just need the search results report, you should be good to go. If not, you can always 
go to the reports tab. This is a brand new little tab and then you can generate reports that way. So that's it of our brief tutorial slash training on regex searches with advanced search. I hope this was a, a great training for you and we look forward to seeing you again.